several things uh, have changed uh, in my life. And I've seen uh, God uh, working. Yeah, recently uh, we acquired uh, uh, the land which is uh, near, uh, near, near our town. And uh, it's, uh, it's God. So I'm really overwhelmed of what God uh, is doing. And this same land, uh, I was talking to the owner today, uh, the one we are buying about 32 acres. Yeah, he's saying that this land is not selling it uh, to anybody else apart from me. So this is uh, God uh, at work and I praise him for that. And I want to take this opportunity to thank God uh, for the people uh, who really helped us to acquire this land uh, here. And may God really uh, bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We, next week, maybe by the time you buy that land, send us a video about that 33 acres. Sure. I wanted to show to our Ecclesia because this Ecclesia contributed that money for you to buy that land. So thank God. Thank God for the good heart, generous Amen. heart of the member. Sure. A particular member. I don't want to say who it is. <laughs> but thank <laughs> God for his heart. So thank you. Amen. So I don't want to waste any more time. I know people will be signing in because we have less people here today because of this time conflict. I'm sorry about it, but I can't help it. But we will pick it up. So we have a, a very wonderful, powerful, special guest with us to share all the way from South Africa. My dear friend and my sister in the kingdom, in the Lord, uh, Sister Bridget Mars. So this month, we are focusing on transitioning from old covenant rituals to new covenant realities. This all three months, actually, actually four months we are focusing because the word of the Lord for us this year, beginning October, is transition. Transitioning from religion to the kingdom, transitioning from church to ecclesia. We focused one month each for each of those components. And I hope you are blessed and revolutionized by those. And this month, Feb March, we are focusing on transitioning from old covenant rituals because unknowingly unaware, many believers in Christ are still stuck under the old covenant. They just don't know that. And, and they don't know what is stopping them. Why still the curses of the Old Testament manifesting in their life, like sickness and, and poverty and things like that. And they're trying to figure out what is wrong, why they cannot receive the blessings that Jesus has possessed or prepared for them under the new covenant. One of the reason is legalism. I was stuck in legalism for hundreds of years. No for 30 years <laughs> and it killed my mother. When my mother passed away when she was 15, 51 years old, I was clueless. I was stuck with this unbelief. You know, why did God take my mother? And it took me 10 years to get an answer from God, what killed my mother? But then finally, when he answered me, he said it was legalism the curse of the old covenant that was activated in her life without she even know she was a Pentecostal believer, went to church three times a week. So that is the danger. It's a very dangerous thing to get stuck under the old covenant as a new covenant believer. So that's what we are focusing here. Those who are joining us for the first time, welcome to Ecclesia, the governing body of God's kingdom on earth. Thomas from um, Ghana, Heng, Smelster, somebody just signed in, Nell Murray, hello, welcome, everyone, Sabina, all the way from Trinidad, welcome. So let's pray before Bridget stays, let's pray and ask God, because this is going to be a revolutionary 
level revolutionary time for all of us because Bridget carries a mantle and anointing that very few people carry on this planet Earth that I have seen. So we are so privileged and blessed to have her with us, South Africa. I met her in South Africa a couple of years ago. It was a divine appointment. Then she came to Denver. We met her there, uh, kept in contact, then lost contact for almost <laughs> more than a year. Then God just reconnected us a uh, few weeks ago, actually. Thank God. So I believe this is a restoration. And also she's going to be part of the kingdom school. We are designing a kingdom university website now. And we are going to offer her courses on Kingdom University. She is teaching on courts of heaven, other courses that she's teaching, and she is impacting the world for Jesus and his kingdom. So I thank God for her. So let's pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to help us to receive everything he has prepared for us. And take notes. Please have your pen and paper ready to take notes because it's going to roll out <laughs> by the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for this night. Even though time differences and everything confused us, Father, thank you for bringing us. I, my heart is full of joy and gratitude today for what you have done this Sunday morning in the gathering here, Father. The word that you release, Father, I'm still overwhelmed by that power of your word. I thank you for this ecclesia, my kingdom family, from around the world that have joined, Father, today to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Lord Jesus, you said you will build the ecclesia. We welcome you to come and build your ecclesia according to your design and pattern. Deliver us from the old covenant rituals and curses and poverty and lack and every other misfortunes of breaking the law of the old covenant and bring us completely under your grace father we are not under the dominion of sin or the law we are under the dominion of righteousness by faith i thank you for blessing your people today i thank you for breakthroughs i thank you for stretching anointing bridget father to bring the word that you have for us today we are here hungry to receive, opening our hearts, Father, to you. Speak to us, Father. Thank you for Bridget. Bless her, Father. Bless her, the work that she's doing around the world and her family. And we give you all the glory and praise in Jesus Christ's holy name. We pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. So, Bridget, this is your time. Take the mic and flow and share with us what the Holy Spirit has put in our put in your heart. Thank you. Let's welcome Bridget. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Abraham. I really, really appreciate um, the opportunity and the platform. And it's very nice uh, seeing all the faces and, um, and having this honor to minister to you guys tonight. So I also just pray that the Lord would lead me and guide me and I submit myself spirit soul and physical body to the guidance of the Holy Spirit the Lord knows this group he knows your hearts he knows what you need to hear tonight and I hopefully I will say something very special to each and every person tonight that will really just touch your hearts and that will change your lives and I'm going to try to explain um a certain concept to you tonight in the simplest way possible but I promise you that if you apply this to your life um, if you have not known this before or you have not realized this before if you're going to apply it then it's going to change your life forever it really will it will change the way you pray it will change um, your circumstances and um, you know I'm pretty sure if I have to ask each and every person on the school, if there's something that you have been praying for, you have forced that you have declared scripture and you've done everything possible that you know, and yet, and you know, it's according to God's will, it's according to his promises, it's according to his word, but there's just something, it's still not manifesting in your life. So, um, and you don't understand why. So I'm sure if I have to ask you this question, maybe most of you in this call would agree that there might be something like that in your life. And hopefully what I'm going to share with you tonight 
uh, will break this open for you so that you can see the manifestations um, of these promises in your life and deal with the blockages and the hindrances that is that is blocking these things in your life, right? So Abraham did ask me to um, teach on Hebrews 12, which I am going to read. Um, and obviously, it does tie in perfectly with regards to the old covenant versus the new covenant and actually what happened right through the blood of jesus christ and because we have the blood of jesus christ now and and in hebrews 12 it actually gives us a very amazing indication of what actually changed or one of the most important things i think okay just my personal view that actually changed because of the blood of jesus christ and because of the new covenant we also know in hebrews 12 it actually speaks about because of the blood of Jesus that the covenant is ratified, okay? And I actually oh. like that, that word, ratification. It's a legal word and it's a legal terminology that actually means, according to, you know, my understanding, that actually means that the original covenant that God has established with the Israelites, God did not, and the promises that God gave to the Israelites God did not take any of those promises away, but because of the ratification that came through the blood of Jesus Christ, the covenant now got extended to whosoever will. Okay, whoever will accept Jesus Christ as their savior, and we have that power of the blood of Jesus Christ in our lives, the covenant now applies to whosoever will, right? To the whole world, okay? That is one of the major things that happened, but I'm going to read this scripture, and I'm, I'm, I actually want to start from verse 18 um, um, in Hebrews 12, because I think this is very, very significant, significant to, 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 to actually the beginning part of how we see the, the new covenant, uh, what, what is the difference between the new and old covenant already, so I'm going to read this and I'm reading, so I'm reading Hebrews 12 from verse 18, um, and I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on the blood of Jesus Christ uh, just now, all right, and I'm reading, I'm reading from the King James Version, and it says, for he are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burnt with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest. And the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. Okay, so this is talking about this mountain that um, this writer is, is actually the theologians. We don't really know, or the theologians doesn't really know who actually wrote Hebrews, right? I think it's Paul or it might be someone else it's unclear but what the word is saying here is that we don't come unto this mountain when you want to meet with God you don't go to this mountain this mountain is Mount Sinai I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly so that you understand me I know South Africans we have a different um what, what do you call it <laughs> we have um, a different accent so I, I might not always <laughs> come across clearly but this mountain is the mountain where Moses used to went up to meet God and this is where M Moses received the laws from God and where he received the ten commandments and so forth all right and the word actually says that not even an animal and we're going to read it now as well could touch this mountain and the animal would die, all right, because this mountain was now so holy, and because of the power and the presence of God, okay, and if you go to the actual mountain, in, in the natural, this mountain, the top of this mountain is burned, okay, so it's very interesting that how the glory and the, and the power of God actually burns this mountain, all right, so therefore not even an animal could touch the mountain, and the mountain get, got, uh, or the, uh, the animal got stoned. All right, so the people were afraid that they didn't want to go near this mountain. And it says, this is where Moses used to go up. So, uh, so it says from verse 20, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Okay, so the people were afraid, all right? 
um, and and um, of of yeah because of the presence because of the power what actually happened and this even just the sounds that came from this mountain so the people didn't go near this mountain but now it says and it tells us that we don't go to this mountain anymore to meet God so from verse 22 it's going to explain to us now because of the blood of Jesus Christ and the new covenant and the ratification that that happened with the covenant all right um it actually explains to me explains to us where do we actually go to to meet god okay because is anyone anyone on this call if you want to meet god and you want to have a conversation with him do you buy yourself a plane ticket and you fly all right to this mountain and you extend this mountain and this is where you meet god where moses used to meet god and then you have a conversation with the lord okay anyone on, on the on the call of course not right this is not where we meet god anymore because the veil is torn because of the blood of jesus christ it says from verse 22 it tells us where we go to now but he come unto mount zion and unto the city of the living God. All right, so where do we go to now to meet God? We go to Mount Zion, all right? What is Mount Zion? Mount Zion is the city of the living God. It's an actual place, and it's an actual city that is in the third heavens, right? Anytime you want to meet with God, we know the word says, come boldly to the throne of mercy to obtain grace and help in a time of need, right? According to Ephesians. Ephesians also says that we are seated with Christ where? In heavenly places. You are not seated with Christ on earthly places. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And this is where we go to to meet God. Every time you pray and every time you appear before God, um, because you want to meet with him, you want to talk with him, you have um, some some matter that you want to present before him or to him, right? Um, God does not descend from heaven down to earth to come and meet you. No, no, no. You have to go there. <laughs> you have to go to where? Mount Zion to meet with God. What is Mount Zion? The city of the living God, Okay. The, and and then it uh, it expands on telling us what what is the city of the living God? It is the heavenly Jerusalem. Which Jerusalem? Heavenly Jerusalem, not earthly Jerusalem. Third heavens. That Jerusalem, city of the living God. This is where we go to to meet up with God. This is where you. This is where you appear um, before God to present your case or present whatever matter or supplicate whatever matter before him all right so 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 we don't so that we so we don't meet god first and foremost because of the new covenant because of the blood of jesus christ because of the ratification that came with the blood of jesus christ we don't meet god on an earthly mountain all right like moses did we go where to mount zion what is mount zion the city of the living god where is mount zion it's the heavenly Jerusalem. All right. Is this making sense to you guys? I can see Skip and I can see Abraham. So you guys need to give me some nods. Yes, no, like <laughs> green, yellow, maybe. Yes. <laughs> okay. You guys know, um, I think Abraham will, will agree with me that it's actually extremely challenging, all right, to try to talk into a computer screen. <laughs> and you don't know whether people are following you, whether they're listening. So you, you need to give me something, guys, some interaction, something in the chats or some smile. There we go. Thank you, Tony. I see I get a little bit of applause there. There we go. That's better. All right. <laughs> all right. So. This is where we go to to meet God, the heavenly Jerusalem, right? Then it starts telling us what is happening in at this place that we actually meet God, all right? And I, I think this, this 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 is made so clear in Hebrews twelve and even in other and in other scriptures in the New Testament that 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 you know God is God is actually spelling it out for us. <laughs> He's making it so clear in his word because he's inviting yeah. you the moment you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you have the blood of Jesus Christ, okay, your name is written in the book of life. That's what the word says, okay? So 
and because your name is written in the book of life, that means you became a registered citizen of this heavenly Jerusalem. And I'm going to read it now from the Amplified Version, because the Amplified Version actually spells that out for us, okay? You became a registered citizen of heaven. And because you are a reg re registered citizen, that means that you have access to, to heaven now. You have access to this heavenly Jerusalem, right? So this is like me being a South African citizen. And because I'm a citizen of South Africa and I have a South African ID document, when I, when I go to other countries and I come back into South Africa, um, the, the, um, the airport security or the border control cannot deny me access into South Africa because I'm, I, I have South African nationality. I'm a citizen of South Africa, right? So I have to have access to South Africa. And this is what happened to you. The moment your, your name got written in the book of life, you became a registered citizen of heaven. Therefore, you have access to heaven and you cannot be denied access to enter into heaven and to enter into this heaven. Right? That's the absolute beauty and power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I also hate it. And I'm going to give this to you from, from scripture as well. Um, the religious spirit takes away the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And it makes the blood of Jesus Christ only symbolic. And it teaches us that, it's no, that there's no real power in it, right? So, and, 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 um, and I absolutely hate that. All right. So now it starts telling us back to verse 22. So we know this is where we go to, to meet God. We know why we actually have this access. Now it starts telling us, what do we find here when you actually enter into this heavenly Jerusalem and you now appear before God because you want to talk to him. You want to, you want to um, present something to you, him. You want to supplicate, okay, um, with regards to a matter. It tells us, and, um, and to an innumerable company of angels, okay? So this is the first thing we see that's present here an innumerable company of angels. It means you cannot count them. There's so many angels present. Of course, there's so many angels present, right? In and around God's throne and in this heavenly Jerusalem, inside his throne room, all right? Having different tasks and assignments. All right, so many, many angels. Then secondly, to the general assembly. Who is the general assembly? The church of the firstborn. Who is the church of the firstborn? This is what Abraham is doing, okay? This is, what, this is what this group is called. Isn't this group called the Ecclesia? Yes. So this word church, this word church in verse 23, the original Hebrew word is actually Ecclesia, all right? So, it, so the Ecclesia is the church of the firstborn. It's the general assembly. So this tells us that the ecclesia is supposed to be present where within the heavenly Jerusalem, within the city of the living God. Okay, you are supposed to be present there. The ecclesia. Why? Because we have a function as the ecclesia, apart from just um, presenting your own matters before God. We also have a corporate function as a governmental body, right? And as the government of Christ, representing the government of Christ, that is what the Ecclesia do, does, all right. So I think sometimes um, Satan can get a lot of things done on earth just because we did not show up, because we did not take up our positions, because you're not seated there. You're not seated with Christ in heavenly places, all right. We are trying to fight the devil from an earthly position. We cannot fight the devil that way and be successful. You're always going to feel like you're in turmoil. Turmoil. You're always going to feel like you are in a war zone. You have to get elevated above the war. How do you do that? By taking up your seat where? In heavenly places, in this heavenly Jerusalem, right? So that the ecclesia can be present to so the government of Christ. You know, um, for me, this is this is really, I think a lot of Christians or religion, religion have taught us that we came to heaven. Uh, I, I mean, uh, sorry, we came to earth because we need to die and go back to heaven. All right. And I don't think that's the truth. I think 
we are the governmental body of Christ in heaven, seated with Christ in heavenly places, because we are supposed to invade the earth so that we can see God's kingdom being established on earth, right? You did not come to earth to die, to go to heaven. You came to earth to invade earth on heaven's behalf, right? Okay. Am I talking the truth, Abraham? Yes. Maybe this is something new to many people, you know, maybe this is so new. So maybe you okay. can little slow down a little bit so everybody can. Slow down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then you need to you need because, to you need to listen to this recording again, guys. <laughs> All right. Because okay, so hundred two times to so many people, you know, you have been teaching this course for so long. So you're just flowing like everybody everybody's know this, but now yeah, like everybody's <laughs> everybody's just there. Yeah, sorry guys if I'm confusing you. I I you know I, I don't want to confuse you. And 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 what Abraham is saying is the truth. You know, sometimes what we just take for it's it's just the normal thing for us, isn't just necessary that general for for anyone else. All right. Okay, so so the church of Christ is present. Okay, so I'm trying to explain to you what is present in this heaven in Jerusalem. So we know there's many angels. We know the church of Christ is present. We are the church of Christ. So you are supposed to be present, right? And here it says, which are written in heaven. Okay, now if I go amplified version, I'm just going to change my version on my phone. It actually says, so I'm going to read again from verse 22. So I go slowly. But you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Okay. And then it says, and to myriads of angels in face of gathering, gathering, and to the general assembly and assembly of the firstborn who are, this is what I like about the Amplified Version. Okay. So the church of the firstborn, that's us, who are registered as citizens in heaven. Okay. So there you see, I speak the truth. <laughs> the moment you gave your life to Jesus, your, life, your name got written in the book of life, which means you became a citizen of heaven. Okay. So you are registered as a citizen in heaven. Therefore, you have access now to the throne of God. Okay. So, and then it says, and to God, who is the judge of all, all right? So this is an interesting word. It describes God as being the judge of all, okay? So if he's the judge, then surely it means that there's some court cases that's happening around God's throne, and God is the judge of these things, right? Okay, so, so this, guys, this is actually a very important concept to understand tonight. You need to understand this because this is where the matter comes in of if you have something in your life that you are trusting God for and you are praying and you are fasting and you're doing all these things which you know how to do, but you're not seeing the manif manifestation of God's promises. You need to go to God as the judge of all and you need to present your case like in a court, okay, as if though this is a court case that you are presenting to God, because you need the God, you need God as the judge to render a favorable verdict or judgment with regards to your case or with regards to your situation or with, or with regards to the matter, whatever the matter might be, okay? So we've just heard about the matter about the land in this um, country, uh, what, what was it? Uh, Nigeria. Zambia. Zambia. Sorry, Zambia. All right. So Zambia. So maybe in Zambia, they have had prayed and prayed for many years and trusted God for land. We don't know. All right. Maybe you have a similar situation in your life. Maybe you have a son or a daughter that is lost, that is not serving God. Maybe you have an issue at your work with your, um, with your boss, right? Maybe you have a problem with your marriage. Maybe um, you have financial issues that you trust in God for. Maybe there's something in your ministry, your ministry isn't growing or your business isn't growing, all right? Um, so there's all these things that we, that, you know, that people, maybe there's a sickness in your life that you are struggling with, all right? 
maybe there's something in your life that you see keeps on reoccurring um and and it's like the same thing keeps keeps on happening right so many times when i work with business leaders um or even with church leaders they will tell me you know bridget um yeah, we can see that things uh, goes better, uh, you know, just up until a certain point, and then everything breaks down again, and then it builds up again, and then it breaks down again. So people can see these cycles in their lives, right? So certain things that keeps on happening. Maybe there's premature death in your family, um, children dying too early, or you know things like that. So maybe broken covenants. Um, so if you have struggles like this in your own life or in your family, in your business, in your ministry, then you know you need to go to God as the judge, present your case before him, okay, because you need a favorable verdict or judgment from God in order to sort out the situation. In Luke 18, you guys can go and read this um, story that Jesus tells about a woman who had a situation like this and she went to an earthly judge, but this earthly judge was an unrighteous judge. She kept on presenting her case before this judge and he kept on rendering um, an unrighteous, unrighteous, unrighteous verdict. And then she kept on going back and then this judge got annoyed with her. He got irritated. And so he decided, let me just give this woman a righteous verdict or judgment so that I can get rid of her. Then he gave her a righteous verdict or judgment. And then Jesus said, if this unrighteous judge could give this woman a righteous verdict, how much more would the father in heaven, who is the righteous judge, not give you a righteous verdict or a righteous judgment to help you in your situation? People are very, very afraid of God's judgment but you need to celebrate, you need to ask God for his judgments because his judgments brings righteousness to your life, okay? His, his judgments restores the injustice that has been, or the wrongs um, that, that has been made towards you, right? Mm -hmm. So we need his judgments, okay? So maybe next time when you pray, when you have a situation like this in your life, you can address God as the righteous judge. And you can just say, God, I come to you through your son, Jesus Christ, in faith, okay? And I stand before you as my righteous judge. And I present this case before you, okay? And then you talk to him, whatever the situation is in your life. And you say, God, I trust you. And I ask you to release a righteous verdict with regards to this matter in my life in order for justice or uh, the right things to come to my life okay so it's easy you can just do it like that in faith all right okay so then it says um okay and to god who is the judge of all and to the spirits of the righteous the redeemed in heaven okay who have been made perfect bringing them to their final glory so the king james version says to the spirits of just men made perfect. All right. I'm not going to go into much detail there, but this speaks about the cloud of witnesses. When you read about uh, um, Hebrews 12, verse 1, let me go there quickly. It speaks to them as well. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Okay. So in verse 23, it refers back to them again. Who's the cloud of witnesses? The spirits of just men made perfect. So this is the years of faith. These are the people who have lived on earth, who have died and have gone to heaven. And now they form part of the, the, the great cloud of witnesses. And they have a function in heaven, right? But I'm not going to go into that tonight. So I don't confuse you. All right. But they are present. <laughs> okay. And then it says, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. You see, Jesus, the mediator. In other um, scriptures, I think even in 1 Peter 2, it speaks of Jesus as being our advocate. So Jesus is our advocate. He's our mediator of the new covenant. All right. Because of his blood, we stand in new covenant to him. All right. And to the sprinkled blood, which speaks of mercy, a better and more no, and, and more gracious message than the blood of Abel, which cried out for vengeance. Okay, so guys, this whole scenario that that uh, Hebrews twelve speaks to 
it actually it actually creates a whole court court scenario okay if i can put it that way so we can see that we have god as the judge okay point number one all of this is happening in heaven in the third heavens in the heaven in jerusalem this is where god's throne is and this is where his court is okay doesn't the word says in psalms i enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart i enter his courts with praise okay so you see it's the same place his courts is where his throne room is this is where in the heavenly Jerusalem, we have access. Why? Because you are now a citizen of the heavenly Jerusalem because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because of the ratification of the old covenant that became the new covenant because of the blood of Jesus. Okay, so um, who is the judge? God is the judge of all, right? Um, who is your mediator, your advocate? Jesus is your advocate, okay? What speaks for you and on behalf of you? The blood of Jesus Christ. We see this, right? The blood of Jesus that speaks of greater things and more nobler things than the blood of Abel, the cry of out for vengeance. All right. And then in Hebrews, uh, sorry, not Hebrews, in Revelation 12 or Revelation 10, sorry, it speaks of Satan being the accuser of the brethren who accuses us day and night before God. So, guys, can you see that we have a court case? God is the judge, Jesus is the advocate, the blood of Jesus testifies for you, and Satan is the accuser, okay, you see, it's a court case, all right, quite easy, right, all right, mm -hmm. so what do you need to do, you need to show up for your court case, because why, if you don't petition your case before God as the judge, believe me, Satan is present, and what is Satan doing, accusing you day and night before God, so if you want to resolve your issue or your problem, you need to show up for your court case. If you don't show up, God cannot render a righteous verdict towards you. Because why? Because God is the righteous judge. He's even righteous uh, towards Satan. God cannot. And Satan, Satan understands how this process works. To go and, and Satan is working and operating within God's legal system, right? Okay, so God cannot violate his own laws or go against his own system. He cannot work against his own legal system, right? If God does that, he would be unrighteous. And he cannot do that. He cannot be unrighteous. So therefore, if there's a court case happening, you need to show up for the court case and present your case before God as being the righteous judge in order for, uh, for him to render a righteous verdict and to silence the accuser. What testifies for you? The blood of Jesus Christ. This is the one testimony you need to remember. You, you don't have to know about anything else, okay? You just need to remember the blood of Jesus Christ. How do we know the blood testifies? Because it says the blood speaks, Okay, you see the blood of Jesus speaks, it has a voice, all right, it testifies for you, all right, so this is the one you need to, you need to remember, the word says that through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are redeemed, we are purified, we are sanctified, we are healed, it's a healing power, okay, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we have, we have liberty to come boldly um, and appear before the father the righteous judge we know that the veil is torn because of the blood of jesus christ right because of the blood of jesus christ we receive forgiveness uh, for our sins and transgressions and trespasses okay the blood of jesus christ is a protective power we are protected i, I you know i all of this is in the in the words you can go and read it up just go and read up all the scriptures you can find about the blood of Jesus Christ and the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, Revelation says, and they, the saints, us, overcame through the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So it's a conquering power. It gives us victory. Therefore, I hate it. I don't like it that um, religion has taught us that the blood of Jesus Christ is only symbolic because it takes away the power of the new covenant, okay? This is why people then fall back into the old covenant, because we deny the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, all right, that has given us this power. 
I want to read quickly. I'm going to open this up. I want to read from First uh, John five. And I think it's verse seven. Um, verse eight that says, and they are free that bear witness in the earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Okay. They are free that bear witness. You see, witness, it's a legal terminology. It testifies on behalf of you. Who testifies on behalf of you? The spirit, the water, and the blood. So I want you to focus tonight on the blood. Okay. So therefore, so again, we see that the blood of Jesus Christ bears as a witness, as a testimony on behalf of you. And if you go to, um, you know, it doesn't matter in which country you live or where you stay, okay? And it's definitely like this in South Africa. This is the big difference for me between whether a church um, is driven by the Holy Spirit of God, by the Spirit of God, or whether a church is driven by the religious spirit. Because wherever a church, it doesn't really have something to do with the name of the church, okay? How do we know whether the spirit of God is, is inside a church or the religious spirit? Because wherever um, the religious spirit is driving a church, the religious spirit is going to take away your witness from you. So the religious spirit is going to take away the work of the Holy Spirit, the power of the water and the witness of the blood of Jesus Christ. Those three things are gone, okay? Wherever those three things are present, you know, there's the spirit of God, right? So the religious spirit will teach us that there's actually no real power in the blood of Jesus Christ. It's only symbolic. And even in some of our traditional churches in South Africa, we have all these man-made rules and regulations about the blood of Jesus saying that, you know, if you're not 18 years old, you're not allowed to use communion, for example, okay? Children first needs to be 18. They need to go through certain courses uh, inside the church or at the church. And then only they are qualified to use communion. So I personally believe that's a lot of nonsense. Okay. I have three children. All right. Three. One is actually 18 now already. The other two is 14 and 12 years old. Okay. So now what is religion telling me? Because my child is not 18 years old, my child is not allowed to stand in personal relationship to the father, my child is not allowed to receive healing, my child is not allowed to be protected, my child is not allowed to be redeemed, not allowed to be purified, not allowed to be sanctified, because the child is not 18 years old, and he or she is not allowed to use communion, okay? You see, it makes no sense, <laughs> but that is what religion has done to the churches, all right? So coming back to Hebrews 12 again, and the concept that you guys need to understand tonight, this court, a court, God has a court, God is the judge, there's a legal thing happening inside this heavenly Jerusalem, okay? God is the judge. Jesus Christ is your mediator, he's your advocate. What testifies and witness on behalf of you? The blood of Jesus Christ, okay? Who is your accuser and who opposes you? Satan, because he's the accuser of the brethren who accuses you day and night before God. What do you need to do? By faith, you need to go and appear before God as your righteous judge. And you need to present whatever matter is bothering you or your life or whatever is opposing you, whatever you are struggling with. You need to present this before God as the righteous judge in order for him to render a righteous verdict or a righteous judgment so that God can deal with the enemy in your life, so that God can silence the accuser. What testimony or witness do you call upon? You call upon the blood of, blood of Jesus Christ, okay? Because it speaketh of greater things than the blood of Abel. People, the greatest opposition that you can have demonic opposition is actually human blood and people in the cult or people that came from the occult they know this right the highest form of sacrifice that they can bring to satan is actually human life to sacrifice human life um so this actually means what the word is telling us it doesn't matter what sin there is in your life what transgressions what trespasses 
it doesn't matter what you did in your past. It doesn't matter what you did now. It doesn't matter what your forefathers did. It doesn't matter what the enemy brings against you. It doesn't matter how many people are cursing you or what obstacles Satan is throwing your way. It cannot stand against the power of the witness and the testimony of the blood of Jesus Christ. It cannot, okay? Because of the blood of Jesus Christ and the new covenant that was established now, um, between you and God as being your righteous judge, okay? It doesn't matter what issue you have or opposition to God. It can be solved and resolved, okay? Because of that witness and the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. And this is why people, Satan is out to silence that witness in your life. Why Satan will tell you there's no power in it. Why Satan will make you believe it's only symbolic because he wants to silence the single most powerful witness and testimony that you have that is testifying on behalf of you. And that is the blood of Jesus Christ. And that came through the ratification of the covenant, right? Does it make sense to you guys? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I get some. Yes. So you're not confused. Let me see some faces. You're not confused. No, you're fine. <laughs> okay. Abram, am I doing Okay. <laughs> I'm not confusing the people. This is all a confirmation, Bridget. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Okay. So what do you do? I would actually not confuse. Great teaching. Great. Thank you, Caroline. All right. Excellent. Okay. How are we doing for time? So I would actually... What I would like to do, if you are in agreement and for those who would like to, and if it's okay with Abraham, I would actually take, um, how much time do I have left? 15 minutes or something, Abraham? No, we have time. Please go ahead. We have time? Yeah. All right. Okay. I love that. So what I would... <laughs> All right. Thank you, Timothy. I see you following me. Thank you so much. All right. What I would actually like to do is I would actually like to lead all of you tonight in a court case like this, okay? So that you can see how easy it is and so that you don't feel intimidated by this, okay? And that you don't feel afraid that you will make a mistake or you will say something wrong, okay? And I want you to think for a moment about that situation in your life that you have been struggling with for a very long time, okay? And that promise that you've been holding on to and the thing that you did, you, you, you're not seeing breakthrough, right? Whether it's, like I said, whether it's a map in your own personal life, whether it's a child, whether it's a grandchild, okay? It doesn't matter. Um, whether it's something at your work, in your business, in your ministry, it does not matter, okay? I'm sure every single one has something like that in their lives. And for those who want to, I want to pray for you and I want to pray with you, okay? And I want to lead you in a court case as an, as an example, all right? And I'm going to give you, a, um, I'm going to give you um, um, an opportunity to present your cases before God, the righteous judge, as the righteous judge. So we are going to address God as the righteous judge. And we are going to ask him to silence the accuser tonight uh, or to this morning. Sorry, I'm in, I'm in a different time zone. For me, it's evening. <laughs> okay. Today, we're going to ask God, the righteous judge, to silence the accuser and to silence that voice in your life today or and whoever and whatever you're presenting today so that you can see a breakthrough, so that you can find help in a time of need. Okay, because this is what the word says. All right. So now I'm going to lead you guys so that, and so that we can practically practice what I've just taught you tonight. All right. So God is the judge. Where do we meet God? In the heavenly Jerusalem. Okay, because this is where he is. Why do you have access to the heavenly Jerusalem? Because you became a registered citizen of the heavenly Jerusalem. Why are you a registered citizen? Because you gave your life to Jesus and your, your name got written in the book of life. Okay. What happens inside this heavenly Jerusalem? There's many angels. There's many people present, right? God is the judge. 
Jesus is the advocate. He's your mediator. What is going to testify for you? The blood of Jesus Christ. Why do we have the blood of Jesus Christ? Because of the new covenant, because of his crucifixion, right? And this is why we have access. Who is, your, who is going to oppose you? Satan, the accuser of the brethren, who accuses us day and night before God. So what do we want to do today? We want to present our cases before God as being our righteous judge in order for him to render righteous judgments and verdicts. And we want to silence the accuser and the accusations that he holds against us. Okay. Is that good? Yes. Let's silence the accuser. Praise God. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> yes. So what we're going to do, this is going to be a team effort, right? Okay. A team effort. Okay. So um, is, let, me ask, let me ask this question. Is, is everyone on this call? Are you sure that your name is written in the book of life? Let's ask that question first and foremost. I don't know you guys. I mean, Abraham knows you, right? But we have to make sure you are a registered citizen of heaven. Is there anyone on this call who are not sure whether or not your name is written in that book of life? Anyone? If there's anyone, don't be, if there's anyone, you're sure? Yes. Okay. Okay. Because if there's anyone who feels they are not sure, then let's do a prayer for you first to make sure that your life gets, your name gets written in this book of life. Okay. Everyone is okay. Yes, yes, yes. I see lots of yeses. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent. Yes, I'm sure. All right, well done. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'm getting lots of yeses. Abram, you've done a wonderful job. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Awesome. I'm getting more yeses. That's excellent, guys. All right. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do a prayer to lead us into this heavenly Jerusalem. And how do we get there? By faith. You come by faith. We know this is what the word says, right? You only got, come with, uh, to the Father by faith and because of faith. So you have to have faith now that we're going to enter into this heavenly Jerusalem because you have access and we are going to stand before God, our righteous judge. And I'm going to lead you guys, okay, in this prayer. And then I'm going to give you a chance. And then you need to be very brave and very bold because what I'm going to do, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is I'm going to ask you guys to unmute yourselves at exactly the same time. And we are all going to present our cases before God as our righteous judge. You can speak it out loud in faith so that we, so it's going to sound like lots of noises because no one is actually going to listen to anyone, but we're all going to hear each other speaking, right? Okay. So I want you to have that experience and I want you to participate, right? Is that good? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to give you that. <laughs> Excellent. I'm going to give you that opportunity. All right. Okay. So as I'm praying now, as I'm praying, the first thing we will do is we will repent of any sins, any transgressions, any trespasses, any iniquities we can think of, right? That you don't have to do out loud. I'm not going to ask you to unmute yourself. It's okay, all right? And we, we, in any case, if everyone speaks at the same time, believe me, no one is going to hear anyone, <laughs> okay? But God is going to, going to hear you. But I want to do this as a practical action that we corporately standing before God as his ecclesia, okay, as his church, all right, and we're coming by faith, all right, and you're, and you're standing up in, bold, in boldness and in faith that God is hearing you. But as I'm praying and as I'm asking God's forgiveness, so, the, so in order, because the moment we ask for forgiveness, what happens? The blood of Jesus Christ speaks, okay? The moment we do that, the blood of Jesus speaks, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus testifies for you. All right. So this is what we want to achieve. All right. So as I'm praying for this in your heart, yes, Abraham. May I interject before you lead in prayer, because yes. many of us came in late today because of the time difference and all those confusion. I just want to mm -hmm. emphasize something that we are talking about what we're talking about is what is being made accessible to a new 
covenant believer. We are focusing on transitioning from old covenant rituals to new covenant realities. So as a new covenant believer, you have access to heavenly Jerusalem. The old covenant believer had access to the natural Jerusalem, which was in the Middle East. Now, because a new covenant believer, you and I have access to the Jerusalem in heaven, Mount Zion, right now, while you are on the earth. No need to die to go to heaven to get there. <laughs> You're supposed to be living uh -huh. right there in this life. So, that is, so we are talking about a new covenant reality. This is not something weird thing out there, you know, new age or anything like that. This is absolutely biblical written there in Hebrew chapter 12, verse 22 to 24. You have come, not waiting to go there, not waiting to go to Jerusalem in the Middle East to have a some kind of fun tour there. You have come through the blood of Jesus to a heavenly Jerusalem, to Mount Zion, to the presence of your judge, who is God, through the blood to clear every cases the enemy has against you. Any accusation, even generation. This is so deep and rigid is just touching the surface of this teaching today. You know, she is an expert in this. She does this for businesses, for governments around the world. So we are just doing the introduction today. And I want you to receive this with all your heart. By faith, how do we do this? Just like she's saying, we do it just by faith, just like we receive salvation. Lord, we come to heavenly Jerusalem right now by faith through the blood of Jesus. We present our case before the Father. Whatever is holding us back from entering into what the rest and the promises God has for us. So just want to clear that to everyone who came in late, what we are talking about here uh, from Hebrew chapter 12, verse 22 to 24, about what God has made available to us as a new covenant believer. So that's what we're doing. So thank you, Bridget. Please go ahead. Thank you, Abraham. Yeah, that was a wonderful summary. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Okay, guys. So I'm going to lead us in this prayer. And as I pray, and I, um, I, want you, I want you to just ask the Holy Spirit to show you if there's any sins or transgressions or trespasses or anything that you haven't repented for that you need to repent for now. And you can just in your heart, just say, Lord, please forgive me for, you know, whatever it might be that will come to mind, right? So I want you to do that as I'm praying and as I'm going to lead you guys. And exactly as Abram said, we come by faith because of the blood of Jesus Christ and the redeeming power in his blood, right? And then I'm going to, I'm going to follow some protocol, which is easy, which you're going to hear now. So like I said, I want I want to set this example tonight so that you can see it's easy, okay? And it's nothing to be afraid of so that you can do this as often as you like by yourself, okay? And you can go and teach your children and friends and family to do the same thing, to pray with you in this manner, all right? Okay, so, and then I'm going to give you, you need to think about that thing that you want to present before God as your righteous judge that you want to be uh, resolved in your life or in your family or business or ministry or whatever it might be for you, right? Then I'm going to give you a chance to present your case before God as the righteous judge. And then we all are going to come. You're going to unmute yourself and we're going to speak at the same time. And you could, I'm going to give you a few minutes and you're going to present your case all at the same time simultaneously. All right. So it's going to be a wonderful experience. All right, I've done this plenty of times with groups. Okay, it's a wonderful, amazing experience to have this corporately with other people. All right, and then from there, um, I'm going to I'm just going to do a prayer so that uh, uh, to, to ask for the blood of Jesus to, to testify on behalf of you and with regards to your cases or the, or the matters that you're presenting or whatever you would supplicate or present before God as the righteous judge. And then we will ask for the accuser to be silenced 
and for for Satan's legal right to be taken away from him. Okay, so it's going to be as easy as that, right? Is that all good? Are you ready? You're ready. Okay, excellent. All right. Okay, so I'm going to start. All right, so you guys can start repenting in your hearts as I'm praying now. All right, so let's pray. Okay. Heavenly Father and righteous judge, we come to you, Lord, through your son, Jesus Christ. We believe with all of our hearts and we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is the son of God whom came in the flesh, that he did die for us. He was resurrected from the dead on the third day and he ascended to heaven and he seated on the right hand side of Christ on his throne. We thank you, Jesus, for the price you've paid, Lord, for us. We thank you for the redeeming power, Lord, the liberating power in your blood. We thank you, Lord, for the conquering power in your blood. And I ask Jesus right now, as we are praying, Lord, and you know each and every single person on this call, you know their hearts, Lord, you know their circumstances, you know their lives, Lord, you know the things they are struggling with, Lord, but we ask Jesus that you will forgive us, Lord, for every sin, for all our trespasses, all our transgressions, for all our iniquities. And we ask, Lord, that we will be purified and sanctified with your blood, Jesus, um, today. And that your blood, Lord, that speaks greater things than the blood of Abel, that it will speak speak today lord on behalf of your children that it will speak lord on behalf of every son and every daughter on this court on, on this call and that you will heed lord to their cries today and to these supplications and whatever the matters might be in their lives lords that is bothering them which they are struggling with the things they are trusting you for god and that you will deal today with the accuser that you will silence the accuser in our lives lord and that you will remove the legal right that has caused hindrances and obstacles and blockages that has stolen our time, that has stolen lives, that has stolen our resources, trying to kill and destroy our destinies on earth, Lord. And I ask that you will deal with the accuser today, Lord. We, we declare, Lord, that Jesus, you, Lord, you're the only way and you are the only door through whom we come. And because, Lord, we have given our lives to you and we have accepted you, Jesus, as our Lord and Savior, therefore Thank our you, names Daniel. are written, are written in the book of life. Therefore, Lord, um, we are registered citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem, and we thank you, Lord, for access to the heavenly Jerusalem, and that we can come boldly to, um, be, uh, to your throne today and stand before your throne. And Lord, as I quoted Psalms, Lord, we enter your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts, we enter your courts with praise. So we come into your courts today, Lord, with praises in our hearts, with praises in our mouths, Lord, thanking you for all the good work that you have done in our lives. Thanking you, Lord, for your goodness, for your kindness, for your love, Lord, for your faithfulness and for the, the great things, Lord, you have established in our lives. Thanking you, Lord, for the promises that you have given to us, Lord, and that you will see that you will, the good work that you have started in us, Lord, that you will fulfill it in our lives and that you you will not leave nor forsake us, Lord, ever. And we thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord, as we all stand and we enter into this heavenly Jerusalem by faith and we enter into your courts. I ask and I humbly request, heavenly Father and righteous judge, as our righteous judge, that you will open up the book roll that you have written, the book rolls that you have written about each and every single person's life, Lord. I ask Heavenly Father and Righteous Judge that you will open those book rolls. As your word says, Lord, and the books were opened and the court was seated, that you will open the books. As I know, Father and Righteous Judge, you make your decisions based on that those things that are written in the books. We thank you, Lord, that we can call upon the blood of Jesus Christ today. And because we have repented, Lord, that the blood of Jesus Christ will testify for us, that the blood of Jesus Christ will witness for us, that the blood of Jesus Christ will speak 
speak today, Lord, greater things than anything Satan holds against us, anything the accuser holds against us. I furthermore do ask, Jesus, that um, you, or not us, but rather thank you, Jesus, for being our mediator and our advocate. We acknowledge you, Jesus, as our mediator and our advocate. And thank you, Lord, as our advocate, that you will intercede on behalf of your people today. And I thank you, Lord, for that. I furthermore ask, Lord, that all the legal right that the enemy holds against your sons and daughters, that it will be brought into the court, that nothing will remain hidden, nothing will be in the dark, in order, Lord, for us to deal with the accusations of the enemy, so that we can silence his voice in our lives, so that we can receive favorable and righteous and just and merciful verdicts and judgments today today, Lord, so that you can fix the wrongs in our lives, so that you can restore, Lord, whatever was lost to us, Lord, and so that you, and you can, so that you can complete, Lord, that which is written in our book roll, so that we can be successful in our callings, in our destinies, in our assignments, um, so that our families can be saved, Lord, our businesses can be helped, our ministries can be helped, so that we can achieve everything according to your will, according to your purpose. I ask Heavenly Father and Righteous Judge, in all humbleness, Lord, that you will please listen to the petitions of your sons and daughters tonight, Lord. Thank you that you are not a God, that do not have an ear that you cannot hear, Lord, that you do not have an eye that cannot see, Lord, that you do not have a hand that cannot help, but that you will listen, Lord, as we present our cases before you tonight as our righteous judge um, filled with hearts of faith. Thank you, Lord, for this. Okay, now, guys, this is the time I need you all to unmute yourselves Amen. and now present your cases, all talking at the same time. Please unmute yourselves. Just present your cases. Father, Father, just thank you, Father, Father, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, you Lord. Thank heavenly Lord. You you know you. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for Yes, Lord, in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for Thank you. 
Okay, guys. Now I'm gonna. I'm going to pray now. I'm going to pray now. Pray now on behalf of you guys. And what I'm, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pray for the enemy to be silenced. You guys can mute yourself again. Thank you. There we go. All right. Okay. So just bear with me. I'm not going to go into this teaching, but right now you have to have faith um, that I'm going to do what is necessary, okay, to silence the enemy. Um, standing in, in agreement with you guys tonight and everything you've asked for. And we're going to stand and trust in the power, the redeeming power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father and Righteous Judge, for listening, Lord, and heeding to the petitions of the people's hearts, Lord, and the things that they have asked you for. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful, Lord, and that we can trust and we can rely on you, Lord. And thank you, Heavenly Father and Righteous Judge, that I know it is your heart. Just as a, as a father, Lord, it is your heart to want to help your children, Lord. It's your heart, Lord, to want to restore the brokenness. It, and it's your heart, Lord, to send them help, Lord, and to protect them and to provide for them. And Lord, this is just your basic nature. And I thank you, Lord, that you are a good, good father. And Lord, based on the witness and testimony of the blood of Jesus Christ and listening to the petitions, Lord, of each and every son and daughter tonight. We faith, we, we in faith, Lord, and in all authority entrusted to us by Christ Jesus himself, I declare, Lord, and decree that every demonic contract that Satan holds as a legal right against these people will be broken and destroyed in your courts today. Every demonic covenant that Satan holds, Lord, will be broken and destroyed. Every demonic altar that Satan holds against them will be uprooted and destroyed and consumed with your consuming fire. Like in the days of Elijah, that you will send your fire down from heaven to destroy and consume the enemy's works in their lives. Every demonic decree and declaration Satan holds against them. I declare null and void. It will hold no power against them and in their lives any longer every curse lord every negative word that was ever spoken over them or against them any negative word that they might have spoken even over themselves lord or their own lives we declare that lord powerless and destroyed in the name of jesus christ these things lord will no longer hold any authority or any power or any influence over their lives and influence them in any way or form in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you will send your angels, Lord, from heaven to remove the enemy and his strongholds, Lord, and to deal with the enemy swiftly. Thank you, Lord, that you will replace the curses with blessings, Lord, that you will replace the demonic covenants with godly covenants, Lord, that you will replace the demonic contracts with godly contracts, Lord, even for the businesses, Lord, that you will bind godly contracts for them on behalf of the, uh, their businesses, Lord, according to your will, according to your purposes, according to your plans, Lord, for these businesses and for the people in their lives, Lord. I declare, Lord, we declare that every um, demonic declaration and decree will be replaced, Lord, with your declarations over their lives, with your promises that you have spoken over their lives, with your written promises, Lord, as it's recorded in your word, Lord, that it will fill their spiritual atmosphere over their lives, over their families, their ministries, their businesses, everything they stand for today today and everything they represent today everything they have presented to you today lord that the demonic clutter of satan lord will be removed over their lives and will be filled lord with your word with your promises with your love with your faith 
pray for your faithfulness of your joy and your peace, Lord, and that you will position your angels in place of these demonic spirits or forces. And I thank you, Lord, for that. And I thank you, Lord, for favorable verdicts okay. and judgments, Lord, that will bring righteousness, that will restore justice to them, that will restore mercy in their lives, Lord. And I even thank you, for, um, Father and righteous judge, that we can ask that any lost time that was lost to them, Lord, that you will bring and build acceleration into their lives, Lord, so that they will just step into acceleration, that they will make up, that you will make up the lost time, so that in the um, end of their lifetime on this earth, they will be exactly where they're supposed to be. They will have accomplished everything that they would have accomplished. Furthermore, I ask righteous judge, that you will that you will release a verdict that states according to the promise of your word that everything that the locust has eaten and has stolen and has destroyed in their lives that you will replace it and restore it sevenfold in their lives according to the promise in your, in your word thank you that you will release such a verdict thank you lord that you will release verdicts um court orders lord of protection over their lives that you will protect them that you will keep them safe lord themselves their families, the uh, businesses, ministries, everything they stand for and represent today. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, because of the ratification of the covenant and your blood, Lord, that speaks today on behalf of these people. We can decree and we can declare these things in faith over their lives. I declare, Lord, that as you have released your angels from the third heavens down to earth, Lord, to accomplish all that you need to accomplish, to accomplish, Lord, and to enforce every righteous verdict and judgment over their lives, that your angels, Lord, will not be hindered, they will not be delayed, they will not be blocked by the enemy in the second heavens. Should your angels need reinforcements, that you will release reinforcements and immediately on behalf of your sons and your daughters today. Thank you, Lord, that we can declare and decree over their lives by faith. It will be for them on yes. earth as it is in heaven. And <laughs> that your kingdom, Lord, will come and your will will be established in, in their lives according to your perfect will and purpose for their lives. And we decree this and pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. And we all say, Amen. We receive amen. that. Amen. 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 So now you can follow exactly the same protocol and you can see it's so easy to do. And, um, and, and yeah, hopefully it will stick to you and it will change your lives. Thank you so much. Thank you, Abraham. I think I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It was an honor to minister to you tonight and hopefully you're encouraged and, um, and you will remember this and it will change the way you pray forever, right? Amen. Thank you. Thanks, Abraham. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you. Thank you. That was a fast track course on the new covenant realities as a believer. Those who came in late, I would strongly encourage you to listen to watch this video again on YouTube under the Kingdom School channel, which will be uploaded within 24 hours. So please go ahead and watch this video, those who came in late, because we started with a little bit of time confusion because of the spring forward in the U.S. Uh, next week onwards, we'll start on time, 10.30 Denver time, which will be one hour early for those who are international outside of the U.S., one hour early than usual timing, including myself, because right now I'm outside of the U.S., <laughs> so I had to, which is good for me, so I can catch a more hour sleep here in India. But before we go, before Bridget leave, uh, I want to give an opportunity for all of you. If any has, anybody has a question concerning what she just shared with us, which is so powerful. One of my favorite verses from the New Testament is Hebrew chapter 12, verse 22 and 23. We have come to Mount Zion. Actually, when we met in South Africa, Bridget and I said those words 
simultaneously quoted from Hebrew chapter 12, verse 23. And that was our... We did. <laughs> we did. I forgot about that. We just started quoting the scripture like at the same time. Yes. That was the connection between us, that verse from the Bible, that we have come to Mount Zion, not waiting to die to go to heaven, to have an experience. You can experience heaven right now. The door has been opened. You, you are seated in the heavenly places in Christ right now. And how do we access it? By faith. And, and Bridget just walked us through and in a practical way, not just teaching us, but showed us how to do it practically. How do you pray in this manner, the new covenant prayer? Uh, so if anybody has any question or comment or feedback, on what you heard today. We have a few minutes. We are not doing the third phase of the Ecclesia, releasing people today because we started late. We lost some time. We'll do that next week. I'm sorry, but I want to give you time to talk to Bridget because she won't be here next week. But we are going to offer all her courses on Kingdom University. <laughs> You'll be able to sign up for her course which is going to be launched in a couple of months. We are in the process of designing. We are talking with James now, uh, designing this Kingdom University. So there will be other courses than what I'm teaching. I know you are blessed by the Kingdom School courses, but this is going to be a university, guys. Other people are coming from around the world to teach Kingdom principles and Kingdom living, not just principles, Kingdom living right now. So anybody has any question, please raise your hand. So unmute and Lori goes first. <laughs> Go ahead, Michelle then. So, so blessed to have you. Thank you so much for your teaching. I've read some books on this myself, but um, I, I have a question. <laughs> um, there are a few things that have repeated themselves in my life. And is, is that because I've opened a door up and I have used kind of that tech, tactic, the technique that you gave us today, but um, especially in my workplace. So does that mean, I mean, is this, this isn't a permanent thing if we do something that, like say I spoke something I shouldn't have. Would that open the door back up so that the accuser could accuse me again and then I'd have to go back in to the courtroom? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so um, so yes, there the, 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 there is actually um, it's possible. It's possible if there is active curses mm -hmm. that um, you know if 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 uh, someone starts cursing you again tomorrow or in a week's time or whatever that it then the enemy generates new legal right. Right. So what we did tonight was very very basic. But you can actually, there is ways to prevent it. You can do, I'm going to try to explain this very easy so you guys can understand it. Uh-oh. Did you lose her? It's frozen. I'm going to post her website on the chat room there, amministries.co.za or EZA. For those who are outside the US, they say EZ. In the US, we say Z. A. So I think there's a network connection problem for Bridget in South Africa. Hope she shows back in. She just got lost. Um, yeah, we'll just wait for her to come back home. So hope you are blessed by the teaching today. Encouraged. Gave you some new keys of the kingdom. How to access the throne room of God. Because the Bible says, come boldly to the throne room of God. Anytime you need help. Anytime the enemy tries to bug you, give you a hard time. Run to the throne room. Father, I need help. I thank you for the blood of Jesus that gave me permission to come to the throne room anytime I need. And the 
the door is open, never shut, never stay shut for you. It's always open. Come boldly to the throne room. So those who joined for the Ecclesia for the first time today, we want to welcome you. I see, I see a few new faces, Jenna and Hank and uh, uh, many others. Teddy, I think we're joining from somewhere from a Moto G Power. <laughs> so welcome to them. Jenna, where are you going from? May I know? Jenna, can you hear me? Wilda joining us. Hello, Hello Abraham. It's Jenna here. Um, I'm from South Africa. So I am part of Bridget's uh, ministry. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yes. So uh, we're very grateful for tonight. Thank you so much, Aubrey. I'm sorry that I joined late. What happened to Bridget? Did she lost the connection? Are you with her? No. Okay. Hello, Abraham. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Abraham. Thanks to all of you. Um, special people it was a privilege for us to be part of this tonight and um, I have listened to Bridget teach on heavenly courts often but every time she teaches I learn something new mm -hmm. so I'm very grateful to have been part of this tonight so thank you I had a question for Bridget, but since her connection was lost, uh, Jenna, maybe you can answer, or Abraham. I had a question similar to Lori's. Um, the word of God says that we must quickly agree with our accuser. Is that the same as the part where we repent before we go into the court? Or is it different? That is different. I agree with the accuser. Adversary means not being in denial. That's what I understand. Not deny it when he accuses you. If you have done something wrong, you say, okay, I've done it. But if you are in denial, then the enemy gets more rights. Is that right, Jenna? Because you've been with Bridget in the teaching more than I do. You could. Your comments, can I say? I'm, I'm just, uh, Abraham, I'm just actually thinking of the context of that um, scripture which I don't know if Bridget is going to teach again or whether you're going to hear it in the university, but there is a court, um, a courtroom that speaks of, which maybe I'm getting confused now, the council of judges is when you're angry with your brother, but agree with your adversary. I'm not sure how, I don't think it has to do with, um, it could be agreeing with the accuser that, okay, I'm guilty, but then the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us. And then um, the previous question, if I can maybe just help there, that if I go into the courtrooms and I ask God to forgive me for, let's say, I've got, let's say I've got a problem with anger. So I go into the courtrooms tonight and I ask God to forgive me and I am now cleansed in the blood of Jesus. If I become angry again, um, I don't know that I need to go into the courtroom again to do that and then get the whole thing cleared because the Bible does say that if I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive me. So then God would actually then forgive me and then the court thing would still stand. I don't know if that's helped you guys. Very good. Thank you, Bridget. Welcome. Can you hear me? Thank you. I can hear you. <laughs> I thought we lost yes. a couple of minutes there. So, yes, I got my internet got kicked off. <laughs> uh, Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so we were asking you know, about Jesus said, you know, agree with your adversary quickly before you go into the court. That was the question. Um, that Jenna and I was uh, trying to address, but if you have any further comments on it, you are more than welcome. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I think um, I do agree. I, I actually heard what you guys were saying, so I think I do agree with that. And I think it's it's going to depend on, um, you know, what the scenario specifically is and whether your adversary or 
you know, is, is like a person in the natural or whether it's actually the enemy. And of course, yes, when we repent, then we, we actually do agree that whatever accusation Satan brings against us is the truth. So we don't deny it, okay? Because we're not supposed to deny it. And in any case, Satan cannot bring accusations in the court, which is not the truth, okay? He cannot, he cannot lie in court. So the things he brings against us in courts, in the courts is the truth. And so better we just agree and say, yes, God, I am guilty of this. I repent of it. And the blood of Jesus will testify for you and will deal with that. So, um, yes, yeah, so absolutely. But I think there's, there's a different scenario when it's like people in the natural that you have, you know, a quarrel with or issues with. And, and I think, you know, that's a different thing to actually deal with the natural people versus dealing with the enemy in in the courts okay but even in the natural god expects us to sort out those things very quickly and he expects us to sort it out between us and not to take your brother to court we know that from first corinthians 6 it says that we're not supposed to do that okay um yeah so maybe just a short answer and, and just to come back to the previous question that i think michelle asked i just wanted to say it is very strategic and clever that if you do a court case to say things, to, to, to do certain decrees, to prevent certain things from reoccurring again. So you can do a decree using the authority, the keys of heaven, which Jesus gave us, according to Matthew 16, verse 19 and 18, verse 18. And you can actually say that I decree that if I am cursed again, that all curses will be broken and will be uh, replaced with the following blessings and you do that once in court and it's going to apply to you for the rest of your life and all generations to come you can do it over your generations to come as well so it's an easy thing to do you just decree it because job says if you decree a matter it shall be established and like i said this is the authority of the keys of heaven that jesus did give to us so if you do this, you don't have to deal with the same things over and over again. And I've actually written a book that's full of decrees like that. <laughs> okay. We, we've like literally identified every single thing Satan has ever brought against mankind that we could identify from Genesis to Revelations. And we wrote decrees against those things. And if you decree it out loud once, is going to deal with that thing for the rest of your life so you don't have to fight the same things over and over again okay i hope that makes sense to you yes okay okay timothy did you have a question uh, madam Bridget, this is timothy i'm in dubai now thank you very much really really appreciate your teaching it's been such a wonderful blessing to me uh, Thank you. One thing is, uh, and actually the question what I was having in mind, you have just answered it. Uh, thank you very much for that. And uh, from the religious practice of the prayer that I learned and today, uh, thank you, thank God for that through you, uh, to enter into his courts with thanksgiving and appeal my case where the advocate is Jesus. And uh, thank you very much for leading in that prayer. I highly appreciate it, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Timothy. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, Patty, did I see your hand? Do I see your hand? Go ahead. We have five more minutes, then we'll end. Okay. How can we get a hold of that book that Bridget wrote on the decrees? You can, you can, um, I'm going to, I'm going to write an email address here. It's of my office, info at AA Ministry. So you guys can see it in the chat. You can just send an email to that address and then you can request the book and then we can, you can order it that way. It will be on Amazon pretty soon, maybe by the end of the month or so, because I'm busy putting up all my books on Amazon. But at the moment, this one isn't on Amazon. But you can just send an email to my office and request the book this way. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you You're so welcome. much. This is You're awesome. Welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> one more, one more question or comments from somebody, if you have. Martin, did I see your hand? Do I see your hand, Martin and Dean? Hello, good day everyone. Yes. Yes, um, wanted to ask Bridget, I, it's within the last probably year, year and a half, I've been exposed to the whole teaching on the courts of heaven and, and um, that sort of flow. But I wanted to find out because I would say conventional church and the regular flow, you, you really don't hear much of this. You, you hear that you get saved, confess your sins and Jesus blood wash you and you are set for life kind of thing, yeah? Mm -hmm. I am asking in, in, in this new prism, in this new flow, oh, those folks who, let's say they've not heard about this, oh, how are they covered? Are, 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 are going to be somehow connected of, of, of this thing in, in whatever way. And, 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 and the truth is to a lot of these folks going through all sorts of issues that, and things that just spring and fasting alone have not corrected. So it, it, it certainly would stand to chance that there are many things that, that probably needs that sort of inter intervention. So I'm asking, oh, oh, oh will they? be brought into this knowledge and, 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 and stuff. So am I understanding you correctly that your question is whether the conventional church will be brought into this knowledge? Is that basically the question? Yeah, yeah, generally okay. speaking. Yes, yes. I think maybe I can answer that um, in two ways and then Abram can also just give his thoughts if he wouldn't mind. I think number one, um, that the Holy Spirit is raising the standard. We know this, that the word says when the enemy comes, the spirit of the Lord shall raise a standard. So even though the courts is the most comprehensive subject in the word of God, more than 4,300 scriptures, referring to the courts of heaven and explaining the legal in, in using legal terminology, actually explaining to us what happens in the courts. So even though it's been there all along, it's like, like you said, the conventional church didn't really see it, right? But the Holy Spirit is raising, is lifting the standard because the enemy is coming like a flood over the earth. So I believe more and more people will come to the knowledge um, for those who are willing and open to to uh, to the Holy Spirit, so so I believe that it will um, systematically um, infiltrate the conventional church uh, more and more. Um, uh, for those who wants who 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 is going to listen, but um, unfortunately, I think for those who are holding on to um, religion and that feel safe with tradition that they will probably reject it, um, uh, unfortunately. So, but then um, just another point of comfort, if you pray led by the Holy Spirit without knowing, without having head knowledge of the courts, you probably have been to the heavenly courts just by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You just didn't realize it because the Holy Spirit is going to uh, is going to guide you and lead the people to engage in this system of God. People just doesn't always necessarily realize it. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's just like the kingdom teaching, you know, kingdom teaching is not in the flow in the conventional churches, Martin, right? You asked the same question. So the court system is part of the kingdom, just like kingdom economy. Kingdom is a country that is ruled by a king. So it has an economy, it has an agriculture, it has an educational system, and it has a court system. Every kingdom must have, should have a court system, and God is the judge, he is the judge of all. So if he is a judge, there should be a court, and if there's a kingdom, there has to be a court system, and there's an economy, and there's an agriculture. So we teach all the kingdom here, not just healing, 
just giving a word of prophecy and all this thing. We want to have Jesus gave us the whole kingdom to us. So we want to have the holistic approach to God's kingdom that he wants to manifest on the earth, not just a piece of something. So what Bridget brought today is an important piece of the puzzle. Just like we are learning about kingdom economy, kingdom agriculture, how do we function in the kingdom court system? So that is different from this world system. You know, we have court system in every country. We have a Supreme Court, different kinds, kinds of courts in, the, in a country, in a city. Just like that, we have different kinds of courts in heaven. And I know Bridget teaches on all those things. I don't want to get into that right now. But you will be able to take those courses in the near future. So thank you, Bridget, for taking your precious time coming and sharing. You're welcome. And giving us a taste of how this thing practically works. So we want to appreciate you and bless you, your ministry. May the Lord use you to reach multitude, millions of people to educate them on the courts of heaven and um, the assignment God has given you to, to train, to equip, and to release the body of Christ for such a time as this. So thank you, and I'm glad, and I'm grateful for this connection. Uh, Me too. <laughs> with, uh, with everybody here with our ecclesia. So the governing body, see, the ecclesia is the governing body of God's kingdom, and we can't govern without a court system. When the enemy is coming with his accusations or any other nonsense he wants to launch on into a country that is illegal in God's kingdom. Anytime you notice something illegal, whether what the enemy is legislating in your country through your government as a citizen of God's kingdom, you have the right to stop it. Oh, I want to say that again. Anytime the enemy is legislating or initiating something illegal on the earth, according to God's word in God's kingdom, as a kingdom citizen, you have the right to come against it because you are part of the heavenly ecclesia, the ruling, governing body of God's kingdom. So you got to, and some of you might know more about this. Some of you may be new to this. And whatever point we are in, there's always more to know because revelation is always progressive. Always. Mm -hmm. Always an open end to any revelation God reveals because there is more to know. So we are on this journey of discovering God and his kingdom and how it operates, how it manifests in all its dimensions. It's like a diamond. Every time you turn it, you get a different uh, glory manifesting from it. So we are so privileged to, to be part of this adventure. So thank you for being part of it. Those who are signed up for the Kingdom School course, I sent you the Zoom ID. Uh, please make sure it is Denver time because Denver has changed its time or all you has changed spring forward one hour. So it will be an hour early. So tomorrow, 8 a.m., in Denver time, we will be starting our classes. So please make sure that you are on time. Thank you again. God bless you. I will see you next Sunday. Same time, 10.30 Denver time, USA time. We will come back as an ecclesia and we will continue this journey by God's grace. Thank you for, let me just pray and uh, bless you for this week that you have a glorious, fruitful, productive. Father, we thank you for opening up your courts in heaven for us as are your sons and your daughters who are citizens of your heavenly kingdom, living on the earth, executing your will and your kingdom on the earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for Bridget, Father. Thank you for her ministry. Thank you for her family, her, her husband, her children. We bless them. I thank you for her staff and every books that you have given her, Father. I thank you for to reach the world. I thank you for expanding, broadening her influence, Father, to teach on the courts of heaven 
and other subjects that you have given her, Father, every courses that she teaches. I bless her. I bless everyone who is part of this ecclesia, Father, from around the world, more than 20 countries. I bless them that they will have a fruitful, productive, anointed, new ideas, revelations, Father, connections and inventions, Father, coming to them their way this week. There will have to be a glorious week this week, Father, for your kingdom purpose. I thank you for your protection and your favor. I thank you for your joy, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That is the culture of God's kingdom may manifest in their hearts, in their lives, in their families, in their marriages, in their jobs, Father, on their health and their bodies. We give you all the glory and praise for what you've done. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank, you so Thank you, guys. God bless you. Thank you, Bridget, once again. Thank you, Wilda, for joining from Thank Panama. You. So what time is in Panama? Uh, let's see. What time is now? It's 2.30. 2.30. Oh, my God. No, 1.30. One, <laughs> okay. God bless you all. Yeah, so next week. Thank you. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Shalom. Shalom.